share my journey from an aspiring actress living in Moscow to a data scientist working in Stockholm in a fintech startup, so tune in. I'm definitely not fitting in the stereotype of the technical engineer, programmer person who was interested in it that from their childhood and was planning to do that for their life. I wanted to be an actress and <laughs> That didn't work, but I'm really happy that it didn't because now I have much more opportunities and I'm definitely much more happy with my career than if I would still be living in Moscow being a struggling actress. So let's get started. I was born in Moscow and lived there up until 23 years old. So I did my high school there and my uh, first university, first master's degree that I have. And up until the last uh, year of high school, I didn't really know what, what I, what I want to do. I was applying to so many different universities. I applied to business informatics, uh, chemical engineering, um, linguistics and language studies, economics, I did actually for two years take part in semi-amateur theater collective and where I starred as like Ophelia and uh, Nina Zarechnia from Chekhov's The Seagull play, but it didn't really work out. I don't have enough perseverance for an actor career, but anyhow, it's not an important part here. We're here to find out how I became a data scientist and that kind of happened by chance. So one of the universities that I applied to when I was finished high school was the Plehanov Russian Economic University. By that time it was called McAdamy and it was a program on cognitive business intelligence. So it was combining knowledge management organizations, mathematics, statistics, informatics, a little bit of programming, a little bit of marketing. It was like a kind of a melting pot of all different courses that they could find and fit into this quite new and undefined specialization. Out of everyone, out of all the universities that I got accepted to, this one was the best in terms of like rating and possibilities for future jobs. So I just went with it. I was interested in informatics already, I liked algorithms, I liked structuring problems and breaking them down, I think it's just the way my mind works and I really enjoyed that part of the education. However, there were other completely uninteresting parts of education for me, like we had a lot of courses on microeconomics and macroeconomics, we had courses on, as I already said, like finance and marketing that I was not that into. I think the most important and most valuable course there for me was English language because we had really good and modern teachers that didn't only focus on learning English but also put us into various situations that we would be um, encountering at work. For example, we had to do a lot of presentations of ourselves, hypothetical business plans, business projects, we had to present like marketing mix, a breakdown, do a SWOT analysis of something and definitely the presentation skills mixed with English language is something that I use to this day the most from my first education for sure. I'm really grateful that I had those teachers and that it went this way because I don't think I would be able to speak English day to day with it being not my mother language without having done this education there. I also did a business English course in London for like two weeks. We were sent in like as a group of students from school that we had to pay for and we just learned some English and with the natives. That was fun. I think at that point when I went to London for the first time, I realized it would be really, really, really fun to live in a different country for a while. So that moved me to um, wanting to actually study somewhere else. And in the summer 2013, I lived a month in Paris just to like learn French language and figure out whether I would like living there. And I started searching for programs that I could attend in France to continue my education as like a second master's degree. Um, I want to say a little note on why France. First of all, for me, it was a little bit personal because my mom studied in Sorbonne when she was younger. So I felt like that would be cool study in the same country or even in the same university as my mom did. Back at that time, so it was 2014 when I applied, France had very cheap education for non-EU students. So pretty much you would only pay for health insurance, which would be around two or 300 euro a year. And you could also get scholarship. So money was kind of a, an important part here as well. And then I heard um, some good stuff about the French Silicon Valley, as they say, the area called Sophia Antipolis next to Nice, where I actually ended up studying, that there are quite a few companies and research centers, mostly focused on IT and computer science, doing research, that was quite fun. 
I wouldn't say that the whole experience of applying and moving to another country was that complicated. I only had really two important deadlines to take care of. First one was, well, obviously the application deadlines for the universities that I was interested in. And then the second one was the deadline for passing the language test. Since I was primarily focused on English and wanted to study in English, I did TOEFL maybe like nine months before I actually applied to the universities and um, it was quite a smooth process. I didn't take any TOEFL courses. I studied on my own and I did a lot of practicing of like TOEFL practice tests, which they have. I don't know if it's free now or not, but you can practice most of the tests, maybe except the speaking part. So I did TOEFL quite well and alongside with my CV and cover letter, I applied to a few universities, two of which were my primary target. The first one was Knowledge Management and Organizations course in Sorbonne. It was the second year of master degree, so like I would only have to study one year. And the second one was the one where I actually ended up. It was a computer science master's both years in the University of Sofia in Tbilisi, which is now University of Nice. I did not get accepted to the Sorbonne University because I think they didn't feel like my education in Russia was enough to fill in for the first year of education in France, but I did get accepted to the computer science program in Sofia Antipolis, which actually was a little bit weird because it's so much more different from what I used to study in Russia in my first master's. So I think what got me in there is that I would manage to clearly highlight in my cover letter on why, like the fact that I understand that it's a different track, that I will have some challenges learning, but also what kind of motivations I have to kind of pivot to more technical role, to, to more technical education, to more theoretical computer science education. So if you are applying to a university, Please make sure that your cover letter and your motivations, your aspirations that you state in your cover letter are really aligned with the program and explain all the gaps that you have in your previous experience that may not be enough for you to actually join the program because, well, everyone can change their mind on what they want to study and I think it's relevant to show that you understand that. So yeah, what happened then? Yeah, I got accepted and moved to South of France. That was amazing. I love living in Nice. It was great. So warm. My first experience of winter without snow and never going below like five degrees. But on the other hand, it was of course super challenging to study there. First of all, because it was much more technical track than I was used to. My peers, like students, were studying software engineering before. So all the courses that are very heavy software engineering or programming was really were really hard for me. I remember we had to build a game, um, like a tower defense game on C++ with GUI and all this stuff. And I actually cried because it was so hard. Like I, it took me so long to understand what the pointer is in C++ and I'm still not sure. Now I'm not sure I even remember that. Luckily I had really nice students that I studied with, so we used to study a little bit together and that really helped me out. And the second challenging part was maybe the first few weeks. I felt like my brain is overheating, not only because of the studies, but also because everyone was speaking English 24 seven and I've never lived in a different environment for so long alone without someone who would speak my native language. So the first couple of weeks I actually thought maybe I should bail and go back home because I can't like it's so hard so if you're studying somewhere now if you move to a different country just give it a little bit of time but you're gonna get used to it after some point if you put enough effort as you might have noticed there is nothing about data and data analytics so far in my journey I have been studying kind of disciplines that fit into analytics and data science like coding um, computer science, networking, graph theory, and statistics and mathematics, but not really targeting specifically data analytics purposes. And I haven't actually done that at all in my degrees. My first year, like master thesis, mini master thesis was 
kind of on data analytics side. We were with my friend and the student in my group, we were doing it together. We were getting data from Twitter via Twitter API and doing some analysis of the Twitter connection graph. Maybe it was focused on hashtags, I actually don't remember. But that did include, apart from like software engineering, getting through accessing Twitter API and getting the data, that includes some data analysis. And I think from that point, I got an idea that it could be fun to do data analysis. Like it could solve problems. There's so much data around there and all the social networks. So it could be really cool to get access to it and analyze it. And then what did I want to do? And then the second year, my master thesis, my actual master thesis was even more data science or data analytics oriented. I was doing an analysis of how Pinterest personalize their feed based on some of your characteristics as a user, like gender, and what kind of stereotypical images do you get if you're like a guy or a girl that uses Pinterest. That definitely became much more hot topic in 2020 as compared to 2016 when I was writing my thesis. That took me the whole process from building a tool that extracts data from Pinterest, cleaning the data up, um, understanding what's relevant and what's not, and then doing analysis, presenting visualizations and making some kind of assumption or some kind of a decision based on the data that, that I analyzed. So that's pretty much what a product data scientist does. And yeah, I guess after that, I just decided that could be a fun profession to do. The way I got my first data scientist job though is a little bit different. It's like happened before I actually started writing my master thesis because I was visiting a friend who lives in Stockholm for a couple of weeks and I was just like thinking hmm, maybe I should apply for some jobs like I'll have to do that in half a year anyway so I might as well just try it out, test it out, what's the process, what are the questions, how are they treating me, what do they think about my education and so on. So I applied to the company called King that created Candy Crush for a data scientist role without any really like expectations to actually even get through the interview process. Yeah, they called me back. I did the technical case that they sent out for those roles. Then I did a couple of interviews when I was already back in Nice uh, with um, their data scientists and data science managers. And then they flew me back to Stockholm like maybe a month or a month and a half after I applied to do the whole round of interviews with various stakeholders, product managers, producers as they call them, their principal data scientists and some more peers. And I mean, I guess a week after I got an offer to move to Stockholm and be a data scientist at King with the relocation package. So they would deal with my visa, deal with my like work permit, get me, help me get an apartment, felt like a really good deal, so I just agreed to it. Moving to Sweden was actually not on my list back then, but just felt like that's that's what I should do because it just happened so easily. To be fair, I did apply to some data scientist roles in France as well, but I don't think I even got any replies. I didn't try it really hard, also to be fair but it felt like my life wanted me to move to Sweden. I don't know. So anyway, I moved to Sweden in October 2016 and started working at King as a data scientist. I worked there for three years and most of my knowledge in my profession comes from there because I got to learn from amazing people who worked there. I got to learn about the data models and data structures and A-B testing. I learned SQL only there. I didn't really use it before, only a little bit in university courses, but not extensively as like a programming language. So most of my skills and my knowledge around data science and how to communicate with people came from King and I'm really grateful for this experience. It's a really great community of data scientists, of a lot of passionate people who build their data models from scratch, the A-B testing tools, the capabilities. It was a lot of fun as well. I met a few friends and um, I still keep in touch with a lot of people that I know from King, but after three years there, I wanted to try out something new in a company which just starts their data journey that doesn't have anything built, any old, 
any of those really cool tools uh, that I used to use at King. So I went to a fintech startup that kind of just started their product analytics department and started working there more on like the core fundamentals of data, deciding what do we want to measure to understand our products performance? How do we want to present certain KPIs to our stakeholders? How to make sure that we have data in a good enough quality and clean enough and reliable enough to actually give this information to our stakeholders and to our customers. A few learnings that I wanted to share that I got on my journey is first of all, even though a strictly data science degree is not as important for being hired as a data scientist, a technical degree definitely helps. The second thing is that learning by doing and learning on the job is definitely much more important than learning in the university like i barely use anything i learned in the first university except for english language i don't really use anything that i learned in my computer science degree except for like knowing programming concepts like i didn't learn python there i learned python separately on my own i didn't learn sql there i didn't learn enough statistics or hypothesis testing there that i used a lot at king when i worked there so it's more about you knowing what kind of concepts are there and what kind of concepts you can use and look up if you need them but you will really only learn them when you have an actual business problem that you need to solve and the third learning from my experience is that yeah technical careers are open for everyone i wanted to be an actress i never wanted to be a programmer or a developer data scientist there was no data science career when i was studying even though we are still living in a stereotypical world where we think about someone who's an engineer being very nerdy and very into like breaking apart electronics and putting them back that's really not the case i know so many brilliant men and women who studied finance and became data scientists or languages and became data scientists so really there is no limitation as long as someone has enough um, motivation and puts a lot of effort into finding out what they like to do and working towards that i hope this was a little bit interesting let me know what are your questions about my journey as a data scientist that I didn't answer. I'm going to try to answer them down in the comments. And uh, if you like the video, please like it and subscribe to my channel and have a nice day.